This is Rox, Rox Revenhart of the Rox Revenhart channel on my brand new channel doing uh, Van Life Rocks is the new channel name, new channel theme so far. Testing my setup on the inside of the van. I got my tripod up, got this van set up. At the end of this video, you'll see a little bit more. I'm kind of recording the intro to this at the end of the video because I wasn't really planning on filming this, but you know what? I started rolling camera and I felt like doing it. So it's kind of a little, a little sloppy of a video. We'll see how it goes after editing. But this is me replacing on the Kia Sedona, the airflow hose. So airflow is into the engine properly. Mine fell apart or burst open, the accordion split in all kinds of different places. So I decided to show instead of tell I decided to film some of it, whatever I could, uh, for you guys. So I figured, hey, this is perfectly good content. I'm not a mechanic, don't know what I'm doing. I just know how to take things apart and put them back together. It's taken me some trial and error, a few flub ups here and there, learning to use a camera while also doing it one handed and all that. I mean, I'm still dirty. So that's like some of the stuff you can expect on this channel. Is you'll probably see me doing some mechanical work on my van life home. On my van life channel fixing up my van slash office slash recording studio slash job slash home <laughs> and slash giveaway when I hit probably um, I don't know I haven't figured out the number yet but when I hit about 10,000 subscribers I think would be a good first goal if I can hit 10,000 subscribers and if I've drawn enough income through YouTube to sustain a giveaway I plan on giving away my baby to one of my my uh, subscribers that contest will have to come up when I hit that mark right now I don't even have my one subscriber yet so we're just starting just getting it started and I do plan on doing more builds and more giveaways so stay stay tuned watch the video subscribe hit the bell all that kind of fun stuff this is gonna be a fun journey for me you're gonna learn how to keep your vehicles alive everything I can do you're gonna learn with me I'm not a mechanic. I'm not even a YouTube mechanic. We're going to learn it together. Anytime one of your parts break down, maybe I can be the guy you can resort to. I don't know. Check it out. Thank you for watching. See the footage. Rocks replacing the Mac or the airflow. Uh, you know, forgot what I was saying. The airflow hose. Oh, man. I could Welcome to another episode of Van Life Rocks is my new channel as I'm calling it now. The Crimson Avenger has been down all day because I was getting an error code that let me know that the uh, with the airflow hose has been destroyed. I have to pull up the code on the screen because I can't off the top of my head remember the code. But my accordion of the airflow air intake hose or whatever is just destroyed. Split. I've been driving on it for a little bit like that and I've noticed it was making kind of weird engine sounds. So we had to do some work on it. Ooh, sorry. Let's uh, see if I can shut off the engine. So I took off the, the uh, airflow hose and we're going to do a little bit of work on it cool yeah so this is the Kia so Sedona the 2006 Kia Sedona Crimson Avenger I'm sorry we're doing this at night it took me all day to get the part so, <laughs> right off. get dizzy with me Woo! so anyway we're kind of doing this channel with a new format I've done a few videos for the van life of the Crimson Avenger this is kind of the first video I'm doing on this channel for uh, from now on going forward so my audience isn't divided you can find me out on my main channel which is more taboo content vlog style stuff but this is gonna be my channel where you see me fixing things fixing cars fixing van life vehicles for my audience so the Kia Sedona the Crimson Avenger has lost its airflow so we're gonna fix it let's do that up so, before I put the air intake hose back on, one thing I wanted to do was 
since I have it open, I might as well add some carbon throttle bottle body cleaner and clean out the, the throttle body. Makes sense, right? So we just, oh, lost the little hose thing. <laughs> Look at, I'm just go without the hose. You just want to give it a nice little squirt. You know, get all that dirt broken up. I mean, look how filthy it is. And then kind of just clean her up. Get in there and clean it up. I mean, it's pretty nasty in there. Oops, it'd help if I'd film it. You know, when you're doing van life, you've got to keep your vehicle in tip-top shape. The more shape you take care of your vehicle, the longer it will last. And these are not just your cars anymore. These are your homes, right? So, let's see if I can get it. Yeah, there we go. This kind of requires two hands. As you can see, kind of open her up a little bit. Just a good cleaning will help make it run a whole lot smoother. Let's give it a nice spritz. Nice little spritz. And get our fingers in there. Clean her out. The cleaner she is, the better she'll run. The better she runs, the more she'll, the longer she'll live. Very important. You want her to be in tip, tippity top shape. Yeah, yuck. I mean, she was pretty nasty on the inside, and you're wondering, like, how does all that filth get in there? It shouldn't have even had the opportunity to get in there. Well, that's because the air intake hose was not doing its job. Uh, there we go, nice and polished up. Now that the throttle body is nice and cleaned out, should run a lot smoother. And, you know, we'll get our hoses back on and see where we go from there. Since we got other things down, it's a good time to also check other stuff. Cool. So, while we're checking that out, I hope you're enjoying this little uh, somewhat how-to video of putting back together your air intake hose. Cleaned out the, the throttle there. This will help with the mass and flow sensor thing thingbiting there. Like I said, I'm not a mechanic. I'm just a tinkerer. I'm just a regular guy who doesn't really know what I'm doing, but I'm good at taking things apart. So, I'm putting them back together. Uh, there's plenty of other videos on YouTube that kind of show a little bit better how to do this. This is just kind of my take on it. And of course, took the little shield off the top of the engine, a little plastic shield thing. Got in there and just, I didn't show the process for me removing the part. I just got this idea to film just now. But I'll try to film the process of putting it back on. So, the new one, the new airflow hose, is, uh, came nice. Nice and intact. This is the, where the airflow sensor is. You plug that back in, I'll show that when I'm putting it back together. Yeah, but um, we got these two little chambers here. These little plastic chambers. I'm not really sure 100% what they're supposed to do, but they go back on here with your little ring clips, tighten them down. And well, the big problem I have with that is the old one I took off there was just shredded. I mean, just, you can see right through it. Really bad shape. So, when I took it apart, the one thing I didn't do is I didn't remind my take a picture or anything to let myself know where these go. There's two of them, and I don't know where they go. So now I have to puzzle them back together, try to find somewhere online, hopefully, um, they're, where they go. Because <laughs> I don't want to put the wrong one in the wrong side, I guess. I don't know if they'll make any difference, but it probably will. I'm assuming so. So I'm going to do a little research real quick and to see exactly how to fit this thing back together properly and then maybe I'll try to video me putting this all back together stay tuned all right so just a quick little put it back together fakely put it back together kind of show you what it looked like prior to me taking it apart earlier 
since I didn't film that part, I'll recreate, reenact it. So there's a nice little um, little plug here. This is for that the air intake sensor. Oftentimes you'll get an error code in your check engine light deal that'll tell you that this has gone bad and you'll have to replace this. Thankfully, mine hopefully is still working good. What my error codes were showing was that I'm, I'm wondering what's going on with the car. I have no idea why my engine's running kind of funky. I knew she was sick because I listened to her very closely. I opened the hood. I'm like, oh crap, look at that big split, big split. And as I removed it, I discovered she was split in multiple places. I'm like, there, no wonder there's no air getting to my engine. So what that's doing to the engine is like flooding it, I believe, or just making the oxygen not mix well with the you know the combustion and all that so there's no uh no good flow going in the engine either flooding it i think it's making it what i heard is called rich making it rich making the oil or the fuel rich burning in it kind of funny so the symptoms the vehicle was having was kind of like it felt like the throttle was going vroom, vroom, vroom. it was like it's giving it gas when i wasn't wanting it to which is kind of dangerous i'd assume i mean i drive with caution with my foot ready on the brake whenever I need to but it was still pretty a scary drive so that's my reenactment I took the tools pulled the hose off discovered she is destroyed in multiple places so we're gonna throw the new one back on all right so now I've got the new one all put together I got the little pieces clamped back on and we're about to connect the hoses and connect the ends to where they belong and um, try to do that one-handed holding the camera. Let's see how well this goes. So we'll start with this end. And it might be a little snug. You gotta get things to kind of squeeze where they belonged. And see how at the top there's these two little spiky looking type things. Those are supposed to kind of fit on each side of this. So it kind of tells you. It's a nice little handy feature. It lets you know if you're doing something right or doing something wrong. So Loosen this up a little bit more. Oop, loosen this up a little more, and then try to squeeze. Come on, come on. Yeah, I'm gonna need two hands for this, so give me one moment. So, yeah, it took me two hands. <laughs> but now I can tighten her up. So, take just a regular screwdriver. You could use Phillips, I'm using a flathead, whatever. And then just ready tighty. Tighten her back down. I'm right-handed, so this is kind of tricky for me. It, yeah. Yeah. It took me about 10, 10 or so minutes to figure out where all the parts went. Because I couldn't find a very good diagram online. But it's kind of important to make sure our pieces are snug into where they belong. And see, I kind of missed the gap there, so we're going to loosen her back up and go try again. I don't, I don't feel like I lined it up right so I'll try this again one second so yeah we got that side down now we're just gonna have to fit this side on and uh to the actual airflow and airflow sensor now this is goes on the box I find it's easier to take it apart and then put it together and then clip everything down so that's what I'm gonna do and it's gonna be kind of hard to show it so I'll be right back all right so that was a little bit of a struggle but we got her if you go up around the corner, that's where her screw is. Uh, kind of clamp her down by hand. But let's clip it, clip it in the box first. Uh, come on, line it up. Okay, once. Yeah, so I promise you, I'm gonna try to get a lot better at recording while doing stuff but doing mechanic work one-handed is not exactly easy especially if you're not a mechanic and you barely know what you're doing <laughs> so i clipped the air filter back on and all that airflow sensor can go clipped back in now so that i can show i think i can get one-handed click, click, click. it should click but i think i busted off a little plastic piece underneath it kind of clips it in good that's me not knowing what i'm doing should hold hopefully it never pops off or anything crazy well, hopefully I won't have to replace the head on it, because that would suck. We'll see. Maybe I'll have to do something crafty to hold it together. Anywho, that's on. 
Now, one part remains clipping this hose back on here. And as you can see, we got ourselves a little, a little clampy thing, which is not easy to do by hand. It's especially not easy to do one-handed. And it goes way at the tip. So I'm gonna have to pause this for a second and be right back. Uh, so yeah, it's gonna require a pair of pliers in order to, uh, dang shadows. Uh, forgive me. So it takes a pair of pliers in order to cr uh, get that clamp. See, just like so. Well, I can't do it so well one-handed, so I am gonna have to pause and do this, but I'll show. One second. And we got it. So hopefully it can focus. Come on, camera, focus. So we clamped it, got it on there. Pair of pliers did the trick. And there we go. Everything's back together. Come on, camera, there we go. Everything's back together, nice and clamped on. She should be ready to go. Now the only job I got left to do on this car is probably transmission oil that I can think of. I shouldn't, I shouldn't jinx it, but I believe it's the transmission oil. So all that's back together. Let's put the plastic lid thing back on. All right, so the V6 3800 Kia plastic lid thing, this big sheet of plastic, just put it over. I think it's to protect the engine. I don't really know what it's for. I don't even know if it's really necessary, but it makes everything look kind of nice. So we're going to slap it back on there, tighten all the, the bolts down that are required. They're inside there, there, uh, and up front, right there, and there. Let's do that. <laughs> Let's see. So, and we're just cranking her down. One way to do it one-handed, you know what I'm saying? There we go. Yeah. And we're tight. Cool. And she's back together. I'll remove all the tools off her and pick up any remaining pieces, clean her up, and close the lid, and we're ready to go. All right. Now for the moment of truth. Are the check engine lights going to come back on? I don't know. Let's kick her over. Oh, that sounds much better than earlier. Okay, a little high rev. Oh. Give her a minute. She's probably not used to having proper airflow, so it's gonna take a minute. Probably need to take her for a spin. Anyway. Oh, she sounds better. Oh, she's she's running much better now. Oh, hell yeah. Oh my God, I, I fixed something. I'm not a mechanic. Ah. All right, so this is rocks of the Van Life Rocks or Rocks Revan Heart. Um, we did it. We started her. Everything works fine. Check engine lights off, and the codes are no longer firing off. How awesome is that? Work. I'm not a mechanic. I've never been to mechanic school. Don't really have a huge idea of knowing what I'm doing, but. When your house is your, or when your, <laughs> when your vehicle is your, also doubles as your home, it's very important to maintain all the little stupid things in your engine. I will probably be doing a lot of that on this channel. I'm sorry if the lighting's really bad. Uh, I started this video in the day. I mean, I didn't record it in the day, but I started working on this in the day, and we lost daylight. So forgive me. Um, this is a 2006 Kia Sedona rebuild of the airflow uh, hose that broke down. Uh, hopefully, I mean, I kind of explained it a little bit. I know there's other better uh, videos out there probably. I mean, that's how I learned. <laughs> so this wasn't so much about showing how to do it as it's just an intro to knowing to make sure you take care of your stuff. And don't ignore that check engine light. You ignore it for too long. I ignored it for a little bit and I think that's what made it worse until I got two error codes and I was like, all right, I better uh, do something about this. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, ah, yeah, let's, uh, let's fix this. <laughs> so that's what I did today. I was like, I just kind of had a bug up my ass and decided I'm going to read those codes and actually search what they mean. First video that pops up is so only like two minutes long. And I'm like, all right, let me watch it. Oh, wow. You just look at the hose. 
I pop my hood, I look at the hose. Oh, sure enough, my accordion hose is split in like five different places. I'm like, holy shit, no wonder my car is running like hell. All right, $30 later, new part, not too expensive, $30 at the nearest auto parts store. Called around a couple shops to find one that actually carried it, which, you know, that worked out. Uh, that being said, put the new part on. She's running smooth, she's running good. I can take her for a test drive and see how that works out. And that's van life for you.